here live in Washington, D.C. for two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got two great guests here, Constant Thompson, VP of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Program at ACOR, American Council of Renewable Energy, and Blair Anderson, Director of Public Policy Industries at AWS. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for John. having us. So first of all, big announcement on stage, Max Peterson, head of public sector, announced some big news with Acor. Yes. Tell us what it was. Well, um, we are going to be partnering with Amazon to do a supply chain study on how we can best diversify the renewable energy supply chain. So we're actually going to have baseline data on where we should start to be able to create a, a program that's going to be a model for the renewable energy industry on how to develop and support the success of black women and BIPOC-owned um, firms. And firms. So this program that you're running, mm -hmm. Accelerate, Acor Accelerate, Accelerate mm -hmm. is your program, it's a membership. Mm -hmm. Tell more, how does it work and why the, the success it's having what is Amazon's relationship with it besides funding? Is there other things you can talk about? Yeah, so um, Accelerate wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for people like Shannon Kellogg with AWS, um, who about a year ago after the George Floyd murders said, you know, what are we doing as ACOR? He sits on our board. Um, in this area and we had to say nothing. So um, Shannon and a group of leaders got together and workshopped this idea. Let's create a membership program for women and minority owned businesses so that they can be successful in renewable energy. Let's pick a cohort and let's do whatever it takes to make them successful. Everything from introducing them to business connects, yep. to mentoring them, to um, even legal services for them. Blair, this is like an interesting dynamic. I remember Andy Jassy was on stage when he was the CEO of AWS a year ago, kind of was preaching you hate that I said that word, but preaching to the audience, build, build, build. There's an entrepreneurship public sector vibe going on right now. Very entrepreneurial across every industry. I mean, this is a real thing that's going on. Yeah, no, we're, we're super excited about this opportunity. The work that ACOR has done to lead on this program for the last year, um, especially with Constance coming in, uh, becoming the leader who's kind of been able to take this idea that, as she mentioned, that. AWS was kind of a founding member um, at the genesis of it about a year ago. She's taken this idea that many of these folks put on paper um, and been able to turn it into really hard, uh, substantive efforts to move it forward. So we've been able to have great conversations with many of these uh, 15 companies that have been brought into the program uh, and start building a relationship with them. I think as you have seen around AWS, like we believe strongly uh, in innovation and creativity. Uh, the renewable energy industry is, yeah. is very similar. Like, there is a lot of kind of thinking big and innovative spirit that needs to take place in that space. And having the diversity at all levels of these companies uh, is kind of an important component to be able to move that entrepreneurship forward. You know, cost is one of the things that we've been reporting on in uh, uh, Silicon Angle on the Cube is, it's right in the wheelhouse of what you're doing is there's a cultural change happening. Yes. And that cultural change with Amazon and cloud computing is causing structural changes, yes. which are opportunities, yeah. like radical structural changes. Absolutely. So that means old incumbent, the old guard as you guys call it, this can be replaced. Not because people hate them, it's because they're inadequate. Absolutely. So you start to see this kind of mindset shift. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurial, um, impact oriented, I can make a change, but actually, I can level up pretty quick because the people in charge don't know cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to put it bluntly like that, but if you're not on that edge, mm -hmm. if you're not on that wave, you're driftwood. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. I like to call it, our members are making systemic disruptions to the system in a very equitable way meaning our members are in communities like Chicago, Jackson, Tennessee. They're in the north end of Texas. They are in um, everywhere. And they're in the communities making these systemic disruptions to the way things happen, yeah. to the way we talk about renewable energy, to the way we deploy solar. They're making those kind of changes. So to your point, they're doing it. We have yeah. to catch up to them because they're already out there. They're, they're moving. They're, they're moving yeah, and, and, and entrepreneurial, it's like, it's like there's a class of entrepreneurship evolving. And it's like, oh, everyone's got the pedigree, this or that. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is knowledge. You can apply it mm -hmm. in software. It's you true. could it used to be shrink wrap software you put on the shelf, they call it shelfware. Okay. You didn't know if it would be successful. <laughs> oh, inventory, give it back. Mm -hmm. Cloud computing, if you're not successful like right now, it's not working. It's true. So if you, never, if you don't have results, <laughs> no one bought it. It must not work. work. So it's easier to identify what's working. Yes. So that 
eliminates a lot of dogma, a lot mm -hmm. of weird blocking. It's true. This is a democratization opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I think you're talking about transparency. And transparency is one of the tenets of inclusion. If you're truly doing things to be inclusive, you're transparent. And that's where you see the change. So that's exactly what you're talking about. Data driven. There. This yes. is one thing I love about this data world. Data is now part of like how apps are built. It's not like a database that you go fetch a file. Mm -hmm. Data is now transparently available yes. if you know what to look for. If it's available. <laughs> yes. So the whole old siloed mentality, this is one of Amazon's strengths, Blair, mm -hmm. you guys are doing. So I have to ask, how is this translating out in the public policy world? Because you know, you, when you can make this kind of change quicker, mm -hmm. you're going to have some wins under your belt. Yes, and yeah. then you got to double down on those. I think the, I think there's a lot of transformation we're talking about in this conversation. Like you just you take kind of one of the missions we're talking about here, which is around clean energy and the yeah. expansion of clean energy. Uh, AWS and Amazon, we have procured 10 gigawatts of renewable power uh, and making us the largest corporate procurer uh, globally. To kind of put that in maybe a little bit more approachable context, uh, that's the equivalent of powering 2.5 million homes. Um, and there's still farther to go. To be able to meet that kind of think big that is happening in the industry right now, you have to have a broad, diverse industry to be able to reach all those communities, to be have kind of uh, all types of different leaders in it because we need everybody at the table, both for the industry, but also for the communities that are being served. Absolutely. What does the sustainability mean to you? Because this is a core focus. I know the energy thing's huge, mm -hmm. but it's not obvious to some people, um, but it's getting better. What are the, what's the core tenets behind the sustainability strategy? Both I of think, you guys can take a stab yeah, at that. No, I think there's a lot of different ways uh, you could take a stab at that. Like for us, it's uh, like probably most uh, out there in the public that people talk about is our climate pledge. Climate this change. is kind of a um, goal that we've set to be uh, net zero carbon by 2040, which is 10, 10 years ahead of the Paris climate change. Within that, there are components of that that are related yeah. to electric vehicles, clean energy, renewable energy procurements, um, carbon offset programs around the world. Yeah. Uh, and I think like, throughout all of that is kind of coming back to, as you said, with sustainability and approaching climate change as, a, uh, as an issue that yeah. needs a kind of comprehensive, holistic approach. Constant, talk about the, some of the stories and the members that you have, because is the recruiting strategy climate change, or is there another, like, how do you recruit, because renewable energy, obviously, could be a no-brainer, but mm -hmm. like, how do you get people excited? Like, save the world? What's the, what's the like, what's the, what are people aligning with? Mm -hmm. And then what's their reaction? So, you know, it's very simply, the way we see it with our members, most of our members, 87% um, of them are in the solar area. Many of them, when we talk about sustainability, how can people live their lives in a way where they save money on their energy bills? How can communities understand how they can harness their own renewable energy, make a little money from that, but also live their lives in yeah. a very peaceful, way. Sustainable, <laughs> peaceful, sustainable way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's part of it. An example, a couple of examples, is that we have um, 548 Capital is a member company. And um, keep in mind that these are early startup companies. 548 Capital is in Chicago, and their model started off with, we want all homes in our communities. And these are places in the hood, some of them. Um, Suntex works with people, works with um, Spanish-speaking customers solely in Texas, where they explain to them the benefits of renewable energy. They explain the benefits of uh, sustainability and what it is. Yeah. I mean, that, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. So it's just kind of show up and just kind of tell them the truth. Exactly, <laughs> and show them the benefits that they've kind of not been letting on, actually. The other thing is, is that this is about economics. So this renewable energy movement that we're going through is about economics. It is a, it's our next wave of being able to ensure Americans are able to live lives in a, in a way that's yeah, uh, I mean, equally that, economic. That, well, you got visibility on the unit economics of good energy. Mm -hmm. Now there's also a community angle, big time. Yes, absolutely. Talk about some of those stories around the community response to this idea of, wow, this actually is gettable. Yeah, We Solar is one of our members, and it's owned by the first female community solar-owned company. Out of she's out of Baltimore, but she has a solar farm here in D.C. And what she did was was engage churches in how can you get involved in this renewable energy movement? How can you save money? How can you create a, a community around? around this work. Yeah. We Solar is an example of that. Um, Suntex, I have to mention them again, they speak with, they work with only Spanish speaking cus customers who had no clue about this and who yeah. are now making, having their lives 
live better because of it. Well, you know, affecting change is hard. Now you've got a tailwind with system, mm -hmm. structural change and systemic opportunities mm -hmm. there. What, what are the blockers? What are, what are the blockers right now? Uh, is it awareness? Is it participation? Community? When we what's, talk, what's, I'm sorry. You know, go ahead. It's your show and I'm interrupting. <laughs> no, no, I'm you're sorry. the show. You're, you're the talent. I'm when just we, asking questions. <laughs> when we talk about entrepreneurs in this space, particularly women and those from BIPOC communities, the first thing that you'll hear is they'll say, we don't have access to capital. People, the, 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 the terms around getting capital to start up are tough and their barriers are. So that's one. The second is awareness. And that's awareness in introducing them to companies that might want to do business with them. So that's something that's a, a benefit for ACOR. ACOR's members, are all people who touch every renewable energy transaction from the financers to the developers to the to the buyers. <laughs> so this is what makes it unique. So what we're doing with um, Accelerate is breaking down the barriers of access to capital by introducing them to people who can potentially uh, support their work, but also introducing them to companies that can um, help them be a part of their supply chain, which is why the study that Max <laughs> announced is amazing, because we're going to be able to have baseline data on what what are the demographics of the supply chain in the renewable energy? Yeah, yeah. And what can we do about it? And we're going to scale Accelerate to be a model for the industry. And that's the transparency mm -hmm. angle. Absolutely. Get the baseline, mm -hmm. understand this is classic Amazonian thinking. Okay. You know, get the baseline, <laughs> raise the bar. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can and see why Constance yeah, is a great data, partner. Data driven. <laughs> so, okay, so for a lot of great stories. Thank you. How do people get involved? Obviously, Amazon's taking a lead mm -hmm. leadership role here. What can people do to get involved? So if you want to support the program as Amazon is, acor.org slash accelerate or thompson at acor.org, that's my email address. If you'd like to become a member company in our Accelerate program, we'll be opening up applications towards the latter part of this year, November, December. Again, acor.org slash accelerate. And renewable energy, what's the coolest thing you've seen so far in your program around renewable energy? Um, could be story, could be people story, could be tech story. What's the coolest thing you've seen? Put you on the spot there. Yeah, you really did. Well, I'm coming to you next, so start getting, <laughs> yeah. getting you ready. You know, I, I think we have a company called Clearloop that's a member. They're out of Jackson, Tennessee, and they're actually working with re retailers on renewable energy credits to create, to create renewable energy farms in yeah. their area. And I, I, what I think is so cool is that she's disrupting the way that you go about using renewable energy credits. Clearloop.org. Yeah. Look them up. Well, the New York Times had a story, I was just reading in, in uh, California, other areas, where you have a high density of electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's straining the power grid, so this idea of having it come back mm -hmm. is what, it's not yeah. mature yet. It's so not. This is kind of the, where it's going. So, okay, what's the coolest thing you've seen? It, no, uh, for me, I've just enjoyed kind of, I've enjoyed the journey. I think the, the moment for me where I could see that this was real and this was going to be uh, an impactful program, Constance organized what's called a speed dating, a virtual oh, speed, speed dating, dating for us <laughs> with about uh, eight different companies. And it was fascinating to get on, spend some time being able to interact with eight different companies um, who we probably would not have ever had kind of introduction to mm -hmm. before in the past. Either they didn't know how to get in touch with us, we didn't know how to get in touch with them. Mm -hmm. And it kind of opened your eyes to uh, all the different ways people are approaching this problem and starts, you could, I, the executives who I had in these calls, you can see their wheels spinning, of the ideas sparking of, oh, there's some cool ideas here. There's something new that we could do. We should explore further. Nothing I could announce at the moment, right. but mm -hmm. lots of lots of good yeah. uh, uh, just I'm sure ideation. you got baseline, Max has got baseline studies. I'm sure there'll be a lot of doubling down yeah. opportunities <laughs> on success or not success, it's you true. know, because you, once you have the data, you know what to work on. It's true. Well, cause a great mission. I'm really impressed. Uh, congratulations. Thank um, you. The announcement and love the program. Thank you. Uh, take a minute to give a plug mm -hmm. to anyone or a public service announcement. I mean, I want to thank Shannon Kellogg. Shannon was really behind it. He's a, a member of our board, represents AWS, and was really behind. We got to do something. It's got to be unique, yeah. and it's got to be something intentional. And here we are today. Yeah. It's a, I want to give a plug. Shannon. Great opportunity. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thank right. you for having me. Okay, you, more CUBE coverage here from Washington, D.C. Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit, <laughs> an event in person where people are face to face. This is great stuff. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. Yeah. All right.